So I've been in the television industry for about seven years, focusing on video games and technology content. Although I've left, one of my favorite parts about being in that space was walking into a control room. It's the space where all of the production crew pretty much do all their work. It's the mission control of a television show. The director is sitting next to the vision mixer who's getting shouted orders about what to strap, when to strap it, what scene to cut to, what insert to, to show next. There are camera people on the floor that are trying to get their shots in because the director's going, yo, get a tight, get a lower thirds on, on the guest. There's a producer that's hoping that the content that comes out is great because they're also having their fair of conversation with the director. There's sound people, there's backstage people. It's a very exciting space. What makes that space so exciting is that those people are responsible for everything that goes out to air. So what you see in the final broadcast is frantically being put together on live TV in that room. As a live streamer, one of the biggest issues is that a lot of things like the multitasking that is happening in that space by like five, six, ten different people is very hard to reproduce on a desk like this that I'm sitting in front of. But thanks to Elgato, they've introduced the Stream Deck. Now I know the Stream Deck XL has just been announced and so is the mobile app, so there's been a renewed interest in the Stream Deck and the Stream Deck Mini. This video is gonna help you decide which one to go for as well as what the Stream Deck actually does. And I'm gonna come from the perspective of somebody that's worked in TV and I'll show you some of my presets and things that I've done on it, which I'm pretty proud of, and you can kind of reinterpret it for your own live streams. It is an extraordinarily powerful device and it's not what you expect. It's not just a numpad like some people have been telling me with pretty buttons. It does way more than that. Quick disclaimer, I'm a massive Elgato fan. I've got a ton of their products. I bought my Stream Deck in the UK when it was launched. Since then, a couple of years later, I am now sponsored by Elgato, so, which is great. So the Stream Deck I'm gonna show you in the video is one that I've purchased with my own money. They have kindly provided the Stream Deck Mini, so I didn't have to pay for that. This video purely exists so I can tell you what a Stream Deck is, why it's such an important part of my live streams, and all the endless possibilities that my, I might be able to ignite your mind with when we finish with this video. So let's jump into the features. Right now, as a recording, this video there are four iterations of the stream deck again i'm going to be specifically focusing on the stream deck and the stream deck mini there is the stream deck xl and the uh, mobile app maybe in another video i'll follow it up if you guys are interested where i can cover those a, a little bit more in depth i'm going to focus on the ones that you're most likely to purchase if you're getting your first one a lot of these features are available in the uh mobile and the xl so you can see them for yourselves. The hardware is very similar in both the Stream Deck and the Stream Deck Mini. The first thing that you'll notice when you pick one up is that it's got a whole bunch of buttons that are soft to the touch. These buttons aren't mechanical keys, they don't make a noise, they're designed to be as quiet as possible. The reason is if you're live streaming and you've got a whole bunch of hot keys, you don't wanna be smashing keys and making a whole bunch of noise. A lot of people even avoid mechanical keyboards if they are streaming, because they don't wanna make too much noise on the desk, but anything extra that you're adding anyway is really annoying. If you've got a podcast or something that you are producing and you need like a, a vision controller next to you. Anything that's going to make a lot of noise is just going to be distracting. The Stream Deck is designed to be discreet. Behind these squishy soft keys are LCD displays which are completely customizable. Recently they've updated it with uh, GIF support so you can have animated buttons. There are a whole bunch of users out there who have fun. They put games on their device. They have memory titles. Those things aren't really how I use my Stream Deck and I don't want to hate anybody else that wants to have fun with theirs. I use mine as an extreme productivity tool. This is something that can be really pro grade if you want it to be. I think paying pack on it is a kind of a waste. The LCD displays can display two states, so whether you press it in and press it out, you can upload different images. They've got software that I'm gonna jump into a little bit later where you can customize each and every one of the buttons on their own button designer, or if you'd like, you can just design them in Photoshop or if you're really au fait with that. The original Stream Deck has 15 buttons, which I find to be quite an ideal amount. If you don't think those buttons are enough for you, there's the ability to have folders, and in the software, you can have different profiles depending on what you're using, which is great because a lot of professionals are not only using this for live streaming, they're also using this for Photoshop or Premiere Pro to edit or use any kind of system macros keys and link them to one, which is very helpful. I mean, what kind of streaming hardware has so many use cases outside of streaming? It's completely underrated. The original Stream Deck also has a stand that's got an adjustable height. It's very light and you might want to have your Stream Deck either lay flat next to your keyboard or propped upright so that you can use the keys and they're varying different heights that you can have it propped at. If you have it behind your keyboard, I find it quite useful to have it propped up quite high because when you just reach over, you want to just tap it like at quite a vertical height above your keyboard. If it's flat behind your keyboard, you might tap one of the function keys. So 
I highly recommend that you find the fit that's good for you. And I like the, the fact that there's so many different ways to articulate it. The Stream Deck Mini, on the other hand, only has one setting. It's a lot more sturdier in its form factor. It's kind of like a slice of a Toblerone, put on its side, if you'd like. That's, that's how I like to see it. It's really thick and sturdy. There are no moving parts in it. It's got a weight to it. And in fact, I think it's a little bit weightier than the Stream Deck, which is nice if you don't want to just slide around the desk. Both of them have uh, like a rubber mat floor underneath them so that they, if you have a shiny surface, it won't slide as you press the button across your desk, which would be extremely annoying. All in all, extremely impressive. I think the only criticism people had was that the USB cable is kind of fixed on both of the devices. So you can't replace that if it frays or if you want it to extend. But for me, it, that's not a problem. The cable length is ample on both of them, at least for my, for my users. But enough talking, let me show you. So what I think we should do now is uh, let's go through my stream deck. Let me show you what I do on my stream with the different features. And we can add a button to the stream deck mini. I'll show you how quick and easy it is. Let's add like a tweet, right? I can press a button and push a tweet up. So let's let's go through my existing stream deck. As you can see in front of me, I've got the whole like grid of all of my buttons that are on my current stream deck in front of me right now. On the top left, I've got the pre-show button, which I call the pre-stream button. If I, if I press that, it jumps to a screen where I have a countdown counting down to when my stream goes live. Once that's over, what I do is I jump into the next one, which is the intro screen, which I have this fancy intro that hypes people up on my live stream, which I think is super cool. And having all of the stuff in order, for instance, I got the intro, chat, gameplay, above, setup buttons, break, outro. It's really easy to know when I go to a certain scene. So if I cut to chat, I'm gonna cut back to, to this chat button where I've got the, the chat actually on the, on the left of me. And then I have a gameplay scene. So this is pretty basic scene switching that you have from the stream deck. If you look on the right hand side here on the stream deck, you can see if I click on Streamlabs OBS, I do a drop down over here. I have my scene over here and I can just drag and drop these scenes. And that's exactly what this button does. I've titled it pre-stream. The collection is my notebook because I'm streaming from my notebook. So I know where that's from and that's in um, that's in Streamlabs OBS. That's my collection in Streamlabs OBS. Then I've got the scene which it cuts to. So it's pretty basic. Again, you have a, a live state and a, and a non-live state, especially with the scenes. I keep them as bright as I can. So I don't really have an off state. But for instance, a microphone, I do have an off state for. So if I have an on state, that's what it looks like and I have an off state. So I'm able to mute myself live while I'm on air. And it's a lot like radio production in many ways. But that's the basic stuff. This is very cool. It's very sick to, to, to be able to chop and change to different scenes, have a break screen like this, or have a have a, a different setup camera like this. That stuff is kind of cool. And in some ways you could do that with a numpad, but the actions are where the party is at. And let me show you something that I've done that's very exciting. I just wanna have a heavy note here. These two are my um, key lights. If I, if I press them, they're connected. Ooh, and I'm in pitch black. And then I can switch them back on. With a, with a key press on my Stream Deck, which is great. Nice integration there, Elgato. I have this button as well for clipping, so I can uh, can do like a replay uh, clip if I'm going to be, if I'm gonna be making montages. And here are some of my folders for different effects. Inside here, I've got different effects, um, a wheel, a uh, Streamlabs OBS wheel, Lo lots of things that can pop up. So I can activate sources inside a scene. So if I go back to my game scene, by the way, and I click on this FX button and I tap on my wheel, there we go, it just pops in the wheel. Super straightforward, super easy, very powerful. And I have to do uh, 10 setups, which I'm not gonna do now. Uh, but let's get into multi-actions. This is probably one of the most powerful open-ended uses for the, the Stream Deck. So if I click on um, Stream Deck over here, I click on multi-action. This over here is a multi-action that I've got set up, which I'm gonna double click on it. How I've set this multi-action up is pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of it. Essentially what it does is it uh, activates my replay buffer, then jumps into a new scene. In that new scene, it brings in a, a, a buffer as a replay. And then after 10 seconds, cause my replay buffer is set to 10 seconds for this use case, it jumps back into my gameplay scene. So let's do that as an example. So as you can see on the screen over here, I'm currently playing Overwatch right now. <laughs> I've got this um, as like a me and uh, I'm gonna activate my replay multi-action so that uh, you guys can see what it's like so something exciting has just happened click my replay multi-action and then boom I'm inside this window and now I'm actually commentating on what's happened in the game uh, for the last 10 seconds 
Have a look at my hands. My hands are up here. I'm gesticulating right now and we're jumping straight back into the gameplay. That took 10 seconds and that was done with the multi action. And you can see how it works. Here's my system hotkey to capture my replay. Here's my stream deck delay that delayed it by 200 milliseconds. And then the scene swaps. I give it that 200 milliseconds buffer so that it's when it loads into that scene, it happens instantaneously. Then I have that 10,000 millisecond delay and then we jump back to us. No, don't be overwhelmed by that. That might, that might sound overwhelming. People are using these functions for so so many different things. You can cut to different scenes and zoom your face in if you like scaled up in different scenes. You can add um, like fireworks effects that like spark off one another if you guys have set something up like that. Literally you can do anything with the multi actions and I highly recommend one of my friends bought a stream deck asked me what to do with it. I said just google and see how other people have treated it and it will spark some ideas. Make your stream unique with this. No one's doing exactly the same thing. You might want to activate a, a voice mod as you transform yourself into like a demon or something. Just you can do whatever you want with it and it's up to your imagination so that's it for the stream deck let me jump into the stream deck mini and let's add a button so i've jumped over to my other machine i've got a dual pc setup for streaming so i've got my stream deck attached to my streaming machine and my stream deck mini attached to my gameplay machine where i play a lot of games and the main reason i do this is as you can see on screen right now i've got a record button which i use to record with xbox dvr in order to get full high resolution recordings i do this because if i'm making a video about a game and i'm live streaming it i can turn that live stream into a recording session as well without interrupting the actual stream. I've got a, a Spotify a connection over here so of music that I bring up in Spotify I have playing over here and I can stop and start it with my stream deck. I've also included uh, with Windows DVR a screen capture button so if I'm doing thumbnails or whatever like in Fortnite I can just like freeze the camera zoom in and then take a photo with the Windows DVR. As you can see underneath here here are the hotkeys for Windows DVR so that I am always recording. All right so let's get a button over here. I've got this empty spot it's got a it's got a hole in my heart and what I want to do is I want to set a tweet and the main reason I want to do this is every time I go live I actually want it to be tweeted out what they've done over here is they've included a tweet and a name change so you can change your name on Twitter like I like I'm live at twitch.tv forward slash Grant Hines or add a red dot or something to your handle here are a bunch of the other services that they offer mixer I don't use so I've unchecked it so that it doesn't populate my bar the Spotify app I had to download from the store so what I'll do here is here's more actions here's a whole bunch of currently available services that you can add to your live stream which is very helpful I'm pretty happy with what I've set up over here I don't use expert I've unchecked it Twitter I want to do so I want to tweet when I go live so what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag your function that you would like to the button that you want in this case it's a tweet so I've dragged it from the Twitter thing you can give it a title so you can go like tweet out live or whatever the text will will pop up over the button you can if you'd like get rid of that text or change the font size the color of the text if it's bold its location its positioning I don't like to show the, the text that's just a preference of mine uh, you've got to connect your Twitter account I've already connected mine so you click uh, you choose your account I'm gonna copy paste this is the tweet that I would actually like to be tweeting out and that's it that's how you get ready to tweet for all intents and purposes you can leave the default icons there if you'd like but you may want to custom them. And I highly recommend that you do, and you don't need to be a graphic designer to do that. It's very simple. All you need to do is click on the down arrow over here. You can set it from a file, or you can create a new icon, and there's a plethora a plethora of different icons that you can choose to add. So let me show you. So this is Elgato's Key Creator. When you click on that, it takes you straight to this website and here you're able to uh, design and create your own key. So for instance, I like having yellow keys. I'll just slide over to yellow. I think that's gonna look really cool on the, on the Stream Deck Mini. I also like having super bright buttons. That's one way to do it. And then you can add any kind of icon that you like to it. You might wanna have something funny. You can add like, is it cool shape that we can add? Uh, we can drag it around, we can resize it. You can, in some instances, most of them, you can change the color of it. Ta-da! There we go! I've got a really beautiful Twitter button. Every time I press this button, it will tweet out the tweet that I've sent and uh, let people know. It just shows you how much of the functionality is completely lateral. It speaks to so many different uses and it's completely customizable to how you set up your stream and work your content. So that's the Stream Deck and the Stream Deck Mini. All of this functionality that I've shown you is available in the XL and on the app. There's a pricing structure for the app, which I think is around 50 Rand, South African Rand a month. And the XL is obviously a different price. I recommend getting the, the traditional Stream Deck, just the, the one in between, especially if you are new to the Stream Deck. If you want a Stream Deck Mini, I kind of see that as an addition to your existing, or if you want to have just some basic scene switching. There's so many different uses to it. I highly recommend getting one and learning how to use it and applying it to your stream with 
with all the different functionality that you can it's up to you like it's up to you how you'd like to use it if you guys are keen on picking one up please check out the links in the description especially in south africa these things weren't in south africa i bought my stream deck in the uk before i came back to south africa because i knew that elgato wasn't available here at the time and i was just like i'm packing it and i got my green screen I got my cable and i got the stream deck before we came back when we arrived uh elgato was bought by corsair and uh, is now available in south africa so for as streamers in south africa we're pretty spoiled and I, you can check the link out below again if you are a little bit confused as to how to use it in your stream i highly highly recommend uh, making sure that you watch other videos and other people using the stream deck with their streams in creative ways because it will be inspiring it'll it'll inspire you to create what you want to create for yours if you want to help out the channel use that link below i don't make any money off that it's not an affiliate link unfortunately but uh we do track traffic that's going through that link uh, for elgato but if you are a south african streamer and you're buying elgato i'm excited that's that's what we need we need more content creators using it if you guys want to see other uh, streaming tips or elgato videos i've got those too this is like a gaming lifestyle channel so we've got a lot of things that are happening up here if you guys want to watch me on twitch and see it all in action twitch.tv forward slash Gron Hines. link is in the description below i'll see you guys on another live stream or in another video very soon